Hello and welcome to Just Be Handy. I uh, just bought this chainsaw off of uh, Craigslist and I've been having issues with it just flooding. And I'll try to start it and show you how there's fuel that kind of back flushes through the air cleaner. I do have the air cleaner housing off on this uh, Domar chainsaw. And then um, we'll see what happens with the spark plug. But the carburetor is just not running right. And then it just meters a lot of fuel through here. And we'll take a look and see how that looks when it's running. could see there's a lot of fuel in here and that's all it would do and I'll take out the spark plug and show you how wet it is and what in the carburetor is doing that now to take a look and see how bad this uh, spark plug really is how flooded this uh, engine became when uh, I just ran it for a few seconds you can see how wet the spark plug is it's very wet and basically it floods because there's an issue with the carburetor so the next thing I'll do is I'll take off this housing and get to the carburetor and then uh, we'll take a look at the carburetor and see what could be causing that now one of the things you want to notice before you go taking a carburetor off is where the fuel lines are going there's a return for the primer and then there's the main fuel line so you can see the main fuel line goes to the bottom and then the return from the primer is up here or the priming one is up here so and, and it goes right to the to the bulb so that one goes to the bulb this one goes to the main fuel tank and so definitely take pictures so that you could um, remember that for when you put it back together and I'll just continue taking this apart and there's the carburetor and they have a the linkage over here which gets into here. So you have to kind of look before you pull everything apart as to how everything goes in um, and comes together. So just make sure you know where all the lines go. So when you put it back together, here's the um, choke that will activate there. And basically this carburetor will slip out of here. You have to make sure the gasket is good and the adjustment screws where they're at there we go so next we'll take off this car okay you can see where the adjustment screw here is for the speed and it's set by the throttle is, is right here most of the issues happen up here where the needle is for uh, metering the fuel and what happens most of the cases when people use reformulated fuel is the diaphragms get hard and they will make all kinds of noises see listen to that that is a bad diaphragm that is stiff and what happens is it'll stay stiff, won't actuate, and it'll keep the needle pressed down. For most cases, it won't. You see how the needle is moving up and down? It won't allow that to move freely. It'll just keep it down some. And another thing you need to do is get a um, straight... Uh, just a straight edge and see that this is not up too high because if this is up too high it will be pressing down 
on the needle and keeping the needle open as you see here and that will allow more fuel to go in as the pulses happen and you should always clean the carburetor with a good carburetor cleaner that is basically um, going to say that it removes that kind of a thing it needs to uh, you need a carb cleaner that has those features in it to be able to clean these out and then just blow through all these areas. So what I'm going to concentrate on is making sure that with a straight edge, this is correct, um, but I'm going to rebuild this with a new carb kit that I got. And for this particular carb, it is... Uh, uh, Zama RB72, but this kit was made by CTS that I got off of Amazon. I had to wait a little bit because it was coming in from China. I couldn't find anything locally sourced. The local dealers uh, didn't have these, so it took probably three weeks to get this. But uh, we'll change it out and try it out. You can see it's got the new needles and everything. Then I'll just go ahead and rebuild all this and check it as we go along. Just to show you, this is uh, the new diaphragm and see how flexible it is and it's not protruding. And if I move it, it's just so flexible and smooth. Here's the old one. You could see it's already protruding, which as I showed you, and listen to that. Um, so that's why it would be pushing down on this and keeping that needle open all the time. And that's why the fuel was just kind of spilling into the carburetor, flooding it and all that. So I think this is the main culprit. And you could just buy these diaphragms and most of the time that's all you need to change out. But since I just bought this saw, I'm just going to go ahead and do the rebuild to it. So as I take the old parts out, I will be bringing in the new parts and rebuilding it that way. You just need a good number two screwdriver. Keep your thumb on it. And lay all your stuff out on a nice clean area. I mean, this carburetor is fairly clean. Um, it looks good. Pull out the needle. Yeah, see even the old needle, it's got the rubber tip. And it's not bad at all. So that's the old parts for here and then uh, like I said, you go in, you spray it with some carb cleaner, and if you have light air, like an air can or something, you just kind of blow that. You don't want to use a lot of pressure. I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll uh, bring the new parts and put the old parts away. Just I'll have them on hand for just in case. So here are all the new parts, new gaskets, and the new needle with spring. So here's the new needle. It's actually a metal tip instead of the uh, rubber tip. So this one is actually not as good as the OE. But we'll go ahead and use it and see how it is. I could always go back and change back to the OE needle. I didn't think it was that bad. So we'll put all this together. You want to take the spring and kind of put it in here. And I'm doing this from a distance so that I can get the camera in there. So this might be a little tricky for me, but we'll try. All right. Kind of hold that down. Get it under. Got to get it under that needle. There we go. 
just kind of hold that down, put that screw back in. So you can see it's all back together just like it was before. The screw will hold that pin in place. This functions right. Now we need to check that with a straight edge that that is not protruding and you want to see a little light through there. So that I would say is just about right. Sorry, right there, you don't want it touching, but you want it kind of close to that edge. So all I did was hold it down and then lift it with my fingernail. So hold it down here, lift it up with my fingernail until it was just missing it right there. You don't want it actuating. All right, so that's what you look for on that. So what you do first is you put the gasket on and that little, the, make sure the holes meet. Those are the two screw holes. Then you put the diaphragm on. The diaphragm goes face down so that it actuates the needle. And then you put the cover on. Making sure this goes through here, the holes line up, and again it's just a number two screwdriver. Don't tighten it all the way yet, just put the other one in to make sure everything lines up. finger tight okay and then while you're here if you haven't if they haven't taken off the metering uh, screws for the high low yet so you could see L for low and H for high you could turn these out um, turn them in and then turn them out one turn each to get you set up. So now we're going to go up here and do the actual pulse and priming area. Since we have the gaskets and everything, the diaphragm, might as well do that. You could see how it, this came apart. Again, this is hard. There is a filter in here. But you can see it's clean. It has nothing on it. Uh, there's just a few little pieces of debris. I'm going to leave that in there because I don't really need to change it and get into it. But if you did have to, you would pry that out with a pin or, or a nail and then put the new piece in and then just use the back of a, a drill bit that's about the same size and push the new screen in. I don't really want to go that far into mine. What I'll do is I'll just blow that out a little bit and then um, build it up. So here are the new pieces that I'm going to re be replacing uh, the old pieces with. So we'll take this off, put this new one on. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward as to how they're going to go. It's not rocket science. Uh, they do ch charge a lot to do these uh, carburetors. So you just, it's better to buy these kits. They're like less than $10. And um, it pays dividends to just do that kind of work yourself, really. Okay, so for this, um, now you can see. There we go. 
that looks good the way it's going to fit up there you can make sure the holes here line up the tabs line up and then that goes in place right there make sure it fits on right and as you can just so you know the throttle is here that screw is going to control that throttle so we put that on and just snug it up make sure nothing got pinched look around and it came together really well um, that you didn't get on the wrong side of that screw let's see these I can't turn by hand but what I'll do is I'll turn them in tight then uh, back them out one turn so we know we're at least starting at a good point and then we'll adjust the carburetor as needed or running this saw after we put everything together so next I'm just going to put it back in here and um, we'll try it out but that's all it took for a carburetor rebuild that's going to get you started again you saw the culprit was really the diaphragm you could buy the diaphragms alone and then clean up everything and I it's just the reformulated fuels are really hard on these carburetors if you can get the non-reformulated fuels and or buy those pre-mixed in a can that's what I would recommend um, that would will save you a, and I also make sure it's the proper fuel for the season I'm running like uh, winter blend versus a regular summer blend fuel um, you have to make sure you're running the right fuel through your carbureted equipment okay I'm going to put this back together and see how the chainsaw is going to start so before we go too far I just wanted to make sure the fuel lines were done correctly like we had them I checked the picture also the pump is working the primer pump is working just properly to get the fuel in there and most of this is buttoned up I've got the two screws here the two screws here now I'm just going to put the cover back on and we'll try it now what I like about this chainsaw is it was made in Germany by hand and it uses US and German sourced parts for the most part it's rare that you'd find a Chinese part on here uh, and then Makita bought out Dalmar in the early 2000s I think and then they started making the smaller saws in China but the big ones are still made by hand in Germany which is really they're really nice saws and they're branded Makita but they're really nice um, for home use and I'll be honest I'm not a big steel fan but because um, they're just pricey and the, the dealer network is kind of small but also very pricey to get things serviced so we have this together and I'm going to start it up and uh, see how it goes uh, it may be still a little flooded the spark plug I use you could use a CJ8 on this this uh, guy uh, or you could use this um, NGK uh, BPMR 7Y I like to use the Y groove plugs because they're less ten, uh, tend to foul because of that groove in there you can't get a fuel kernel in there that would foul the plug it'll always spark on one or the other side um, and so it'll always find a uh, a path for the spark so I like to use these I've always had good luck with these spark plugs so that's why I like to use them and then let's take this outside hopefully it's still light enough it's starting to get dark real quick and see how it starts okay let's try it out so to start this saw make sure your brake is on it's in choke you 
pull up on the throttle and press that button to lock the throttle midway. There you have it, carb kit, and it's running. I have to just adjust the carburetor for when it gets warm. There you have it, adjusted at 2800 RPM for idle, and the uh, high and low speeds have been adjusted for the recommendations. And it's running well, so that carb cleaning did it. All right, thank you for watching Just Be Handy, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you for joining me about this carburetor rebuild. can cause a carburetor to just start flooding as those diaphragms get old and they start to um, sound crispy like that they just will hold the needle open and the carburetor will not run properly. All right, again, thank you for joining me at Just Be Handy. Please give us the thumbs up and um, subscribe. We really need your help to propel us forward. We're slowly gaining uh, members and I just love that. And please comment below if there's anything else you'd like to see. Have a good day.